What's up, Battletech fans? Today we're painting up the Kit Fox of Captain Katie Ferraro from Fox Tales, the collected stories of the Fox Patrol by Brian Young. This is going to be an intermediate tutorial because it involves a minor amount of layering, but I'd still invite painters of all skill levels to join in and see what they can achieve. As usual, all the materials you'll need will be in the video description, so let's get started. Because my base for this is going to be a contrast paint, I'm starting with Wraithbone Spray as my undercoat. This gives the orange going on top a warmer hue, giving it a brighter look from a distance. Afterwards, I give the miniature my usual light dusting of Duplicolor Sandable White Auto Primer, but not enough to really be noticeable. I just want to give the paint a little something to stick to so it doesn't bead off and cause me problems later on in the process. Griffhound Orange is where I'm going to start with this, and I'll work my way down in shade before I work my way back up. Make sure you get full coverage here, but be careful not to overdo it this early on. You'll apply something darker over this later, so it's a good idea to spread this stuff around as evenly as you can. Go as slow as you need to and cover the whole miniature, even the areas that'll be gray later. We'll just paint over all that and no one will ever be the wiser. If you notice too much contrast paint pooling in a spot you don't want it to, use your brush to soak up the excess and either reapply or apply it anywhere else that's needed. Too much too soon can obscure the fine details at this point and leave crevices filled to the point that even dry brushing can't save them, so take as much time as you need. After I've given the Griffhound Orange about an hour or so to dry, I'll apply a coat of Fugan Orange at full strength. This is so the lighter orange I have for later will give the optical illusion of more depth in the lines than there really is. The important part is to wait for the previous coat to fully dry, because the viscosity of the Fugan Orange shade is so similar to the Griffhound. If you don't wait long enough in between, you'll accidentally reactivate the Griffhound with the Fugan and end up rubbing off a huge section of paint, usually in a highly visible section of the miniature. Ask me how I know. Give it some time. You'll be glad you did in the end. Finally, after another hour or so to dry, I'll get out my large, slanted dry brush and load up some Troll Slayer Orange. I'm going to wipe most of it off on this napkin here, and I'll test a little bit of it out on my thumbnail first, just to make sure there's not too much coming off of the bristles on each pass of the brush. You only want a minute amount to be coming off of the brush at this point, so it's best to know before you go in. Use quick and even strokes, and don't worry about accuracy here. You're trying to hit the whole mini, but also make sure to inspect your work as you go. This is a highlight measure, not necessarily something you're using to change the overall color. This is to highlight the raised areas of the miniature and to provide the depth perception we talked about earlier. The bright edges of the mini will contrast well with the darker, recessed areas and provide a great look on the tabletop. Now, get out your wet palette and let's thin down some gray sear. It's easy to go too thin here, so just work your way up and use the hex base to test how the paint is coming off of the brush before you start. It's okay if it comes off a tad streaky at first, you're just wanting to make sure it's not so thick that it leaves the surface area looking rough even from a distance. I did the front area of the fuselage, shoulder joints, left hand and shin pads. I kept the feet orange because I figure after traipsing around in the wilderness for long enough you'd wear all of that off anyway. I'll put basing material on it later and that'll be good enough for me, and less work for you. See? Everyone wins. Be careful to work slow and with a small detail brush here. 
you're looking to only get certain areas of the model and any lines you cover up you'll have to go back in with contrast and redo. So this is one of those zen moments where you take your time and make every move count the best you can. Even my hand shook a little bit doing this, so it's okay to not be perfect. If it takes you a little extra paint after the second coat, that's okay too. Use a smaller brush on the smaller sides of the shin if you need to. Now, get out your Nuln Oil and go over all the gray areas with a coat at full strength. Go slow though, and be careful not to spread it past where you want it. Just like with the contrast paints, use your brush to wick it away if you do, and give this about an hour or so to dry before you move on to the next bit. Just like with the orange before, we're going to dry brush all our areas in Ulthuan Gray using a small flat dry brush with short moves. Don't need to apply too much pressure here, just enough to highlight the raised areas and give the wash that sunk in look. My classic combo for metallics is lead belcher and null oil. As I like to say, pick your spots and get to work. The good news with this mini is there aren't many areas that really need it. Don't be limited by what I've done though. If you see an area you think would look better in metallic, then I encourage you to do what makes you the happiest. Wait about 30 minutes in between applying the lead belcher and null oil, otherwise you get sparkly water, and that's no fun. When it's time, throw some Nuln on your metallic areas at full strength and wait for them to dry. Be careful not to over apply at this step though, as you'll obscure the details when it dries. And we're done! I finished the base with Sterland Battlemire, Seraphim Sepia, and Scrag Brown. Other basing effects by Army Painter. The cockpit is moot green with waystone green over top, and the heat effects on the gun barrel are Talisar Blue over Magos Purple. I hope you liked this tutorial, and if you want to see more like it, do us a big favor and subscribe. Turn on all notifications so you can see exactly where Battlebound is going to turn up next. Thanks again for watching, I'm Tuck Davian, and I'll see you next time right here out on the Space Lane. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.